I just wanted to actually sync up with my friend. Uh, you know, he's been my friend for like several years. So he just recently got a job as a DevOps engineer, a senior DevOps engineer at a startup in Bay Area. You know, he was in a non DevOps engineer job. He was actually like an operations engineer. He was working for Oracle. Uh, and uh, he actually then uh, somehow pivoted the career to DevOps engineer. So we'll talk about that journey. But the main thing is, uh, you know, we want to understand like what he did in that process, right? So Naveen, actually, like, welcome to my channel, actually. And uh, thanks for actually doing this interview. Yeah, let's get started. I want you to introduce uh, yourself, a little background about you. Sure. First of all, uh, thanks for inviting me to the channel. Uh, I remember the first day when you uh, when you start this channel, uh, I, I was actually ping that channel to a lot of my friends near my neighborhood to ask them to follow. I hope they're doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, one day this will, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this will get uh, very famous because I, I've seen I've, I've been seeing your videos. It's it's pretty good actually. Me and Bharat, we go way back uh, 2013 or 14, I guess. I think 2011. 10. Yeah, 2010. Yeah. We used to uh, work in the same company, of course, in a different team. It's called Wells Fargo. At that point, I was actually mainly uh, a web logic administrator. Like, it's like middleware administrator. We used to manage all the middleware applications in Wells Fargo, one of the uh, group. Um, since then, actually, uh, after that, when I thought of uh, taking a uh, career change, I was actually a consultant then. So I wanted to take a full-time job and then uh, start looking for jobs. And, uh, uh, Oracle came uh, my way. Uh, so I thought the role was good. Actually, everything was uh, because I, like, of course, obvious, obviously to work for a company called Oracle is very good. And the role was actually uh, more of what I was working before. Uh, and then when I came here, uh, I know because at that point I was not a DBA. So I thought maybe I will get a good exposure in the database side which I did uh, actually, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a core DBA now, but I have a lot of knowledge. I think uh, over the period of time when I started working, I got, I gained a lot of knowledge. So uh, it actually started with as an operations engineer, uh, my role in Oracle, where uh, said at, when we joined with like very small sort of application, now that, that it's like, it grew exponentially, uh, the, the team and the, the, uh, the SaaS, Oracle SaaS, uh, as we, 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 we understood from last few years, how their growth is right. So, um, it was initially as like mainly getting the applications from the LCM, uh, other teams where we get the software, we stage across all the data centers, we patch them. It was mainly for patching initially when we started. And then, uh, then came that, so we, we had to actually quarterly do the incremental upgrades, all the stuff. So updating and patching the applications was our main uh, focus area. We used to help out in other things as well, uh, helping out the support team with some issues, all that other stuff, but our main responsibilities were uh, patching and updates. But when we started uh, moving to the new OCI, right, uh, we had to migrate all the applications, right? So when we started the process of migration, that's when uh, the DevOps culture came into our, uh, into our uh, organization. So everyone actually, stressed on uh, moving to the DevOps culture, think, think like DevOps engineers. Of course, we don't know what that was at that point. We know a lot of people are outside uh, the DevOps teams and studies. So I was curious about like how uh, and what they do at DevOps means. Like I started reading about it and then, uh, but I felt like even though we, we started calling ourselves as DevOps engineers, we're not doing, uh, we're not into that space yet. Because first thing that comes into picture when we say DevOps is, I think we, I spoke about you a lot of times also, uh, doing some uh, coding, like learn some programming language. So then uh, in three years back, I think three, three and a half years back, I started learning about, uh, I took one language. I wanted to know which language it is. Initially, I thought of Java and everything. And then I, uh, I took up a Python. And then I took up, I started learning a lot of, I started watching a lot of videos. Even you know about it. And then I was trying to practice on my laptop. Uh, I was not going anywhere. Like I was like probably six months, I was doing the same thing. Uh, but then I realized that like, it is not the way to do. Uh, I still remember one of my colleagues from uh, uh, my company, Oracle. He actually gave me a good advice. Uh, instead of practicing on your laptop, do it for our team. Try to pick something where you can think you think that our team can uh, utilize some 
uh, some utility tools. So then I realized, okay, there was some project which actually started like a simple project. Uh, whenever we raise an issue, we need to, uh, we are, always upload uh, OS virtual logs for, from the machine. So I thought, let me up, upload, like, so let me do it that automated way. So I, rem I remember that actually that was, uh, I wrote for almost uh, two weeks that script. And then uh, when when it started working when the when when team started uh, using it and then it was making actually I felt like uh, it was helping the team because every day that they were using any any issue that raised the first thing is they they used to run my scripts. Uh, I still remember like was one uh, big project I took up. I think it's actually it needed a lot of uh, oops concept. I think that's when I think uh, we got in touch with you and I was asking you a lot of questions because you were at that point you were the only expert I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it really helped me out. Uh, I would say it ignited some spark in me to learn more. I would say so. Then I started doing more and more stuff, and then I started learning about uh, like other stuff, like not even just Python, but how HTML works. I even actually uh, uh, did a sample product of uh, some news, like a news website from myself uh, uh, using uh, Python Django. Uh, one thing is actually, from my experience, you can actually learn as much as possible on, uh, like separately, uh, by watching videos and all. But then only when you put that skill to use, actually, you start gaining confidence. Actually, it as in like, oh, now I'm like doing real work. Actually, this is real experience, yeah. and and that's when you start getting confidence. And same ha happened with me. Like when I was. When I started uh, automating uh, automating uh, data guard, uh, oh, that's okay. when actually I was like, okay, <laughs> now I know myself that I can do some Python actually. <laughs> so that's <laughs> when actually it became real for me. Cool. Yeah, the moment you, uh, that <laughs> something first your first project like succeeds, right, and then you get that. Uh, I mean, I felt very good actually. Yeah, I still remember that feeling. Uh, uh, that's why I, I couldn't forget how it started out. It, it is very satisfactory. Like the yes. moment, like you see your automation, like go to the hands of the client, and then you can see the the benefit, right? I I did something like that recently, you know, where I took like some, I don't know, some twenty clicks. I turned it into one click, basically wow. for a customer. So wow. by building a pipeline, by combining multiple pipelines. And then he was very happy. I was like really happy because, you know, that's meaningful work, right? That's true, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Python, okay. So, and I know that like, uh, which you know, I know something that you didn't mention now, which is like you started like experimenting with Python, uh, which is you all you also wrote some Python scripts, which, uh, which would actually interact with APIs. The res let's talk about resources actually like were you just like uh searching on google and youtube and then you could actually like you just found whatever was useful and you implemented what you had to like what kind of resources did you use actually for learning all these things not just python docker and devops you mentioned like you started learning about devops as well so yeah what? devops uh i was just uh just google and youtube i think uh both of them is more than enough to learn what DevOps everything is. Uh, and regarding Python, there are a lot of times actually I had uh, issues and I, I know I couldn't ask, like for example, there are a few times which actually I seek help from you, you remember. And then same way, I, I have a colleague in my, my company who actually is a developer. So he used to help me out with anything, any hurdles I'm facing. And there are a lot of times actually I started exploring more stuff and then I was reading about uh, whenever I, I type something in Google, right? The first website that comes is Stack Overflow. So I, I, I got registered at that website and then started posting questions there. And I used to have, uh, get a lot of help. And it's very good because most of the times you'll get an answer within like a, within a day or sometimes within an hour. Uh, I would say, uh, but... Uh, and actually, I, I think I also contributed a few times, which after I came to know if I can able to answer that question, <laughs> most of the times initially the development side, I, I couldn't write. So that was my main, uh, even now also I'm using, uh, whenever I do Terraform stuff, I start uh, putting there so that I, I know, because I feel like that's a very good. We know we have GitHub uh, repos, all the stuff where we can 
raise an issue or uh, and uh, get it uh, an answer from there but i would actually first go to stack overflow and then go there yeah have you stack overflow a lot yeah. yeah so i mean just i just want to like highlight some of the packages that we use in python some of the packages that we need to use for automation python packages or sub the yeah, sub process package of course actually without that yeah, right. you wouldn't wouldn't be able to run any commands of course there is os package and um, uh, for the api interaction more thing is we need date because everything i do it from the logs most of the times <laughs> date time actually time zones yeah. date time yeah and request package so that is another one that's useful uh, yeah for anything API, else we need that yeah right. yeah anything most else that's coming I to use... your mind um good actually i should see my code or what all packages i i regularly use but i know the most of the stuff is os this uh actually at one point uh, I, when i was doing a major uh, a feature for one of our internal application i started using a logging also but then uh, that was actually loading uh, uh, it's actually overloading our uh, it's a small internal application so overloading the application itself so i my my developer actually suggested don't use logging for now it's not needed because only we both are actually one ones who who going to take care of it so we don't need that much so like there are few things which uh, we like we used but major thing was this request uh, date i i would say request what date about the then... what about the inputs actually the way you would receive the inputs and all is there like a package that you used for handling the inputs like script inputs parameters uh, no or... actually yeah. no uh, I, everything is actually uh, you mean like to wait for the user inputs like not wait for user inputs like like for scripts actually you need to pass certain arguments right to script oh you mean arg parse you mean yeah arg uh, parse yeah, we, that's a very common one i use like something called click when uh, i got a call uh, interview call from uh, uh, salesforce <laughs> so i know i can actually uh, at that point i was actually doing good coding uh, i was able to like uh, i feel like i was fairly confident that i can actually uh, without any uh, uh, without getting scared i can go and perform an interview but uh, i think my just called me up and he, he for the first question he was asked he asked me is uh, uh, so what kind of containerization as a containerization tool you guys use no no, no. what kind of orchestration tool you, you guys use i i start telling about my orchestration tool like what we use and then he said uh, i think sorry you don't know much about containerization uh, uh, unfortunately this role requires uh, more that guy who knows more containers the 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 interview went for only 5 minutes oh and my then, god okay then i then I meant that was obvious, obviously i feel like okay so that's how we need to learn right i don't know that tool and then i i came i took that feedback uh, i know it was hard but actually i felt okay so this is what they're looking for so from then onwards like i know okay i need to start learning about containerization that's when i started learning docker i finished docker co- course everything um and uh, i used to uh, have this i, I still have it uh, it's called cloud guru i don't know if you know about it site so it has hands on labs also so you can learn everything so i i started doing that uh, and then when next time when i uh, went to different inter- there like a lot of things happened like a lot of interviews when i went uh, there is something that i don't know there and then i used to come back uh, uh, that, put my head down and then yeah that's an that. interesting approach as well like because you were attending many yeah. interviews actually yeah, i told were... you right i was like, mainly attending, <laughs> attending interviews to get to know what i have to learn actually i was not feeling anything like whenever i get a call i'll just go and talk whatever i i, I know <laughs> but you were so shooting I, for you were shooting for devops jobs or any job actually like i was actually more looking into more devops and sorry uh, a site the reason is uh, there right see for me right i felt like when i was in uh, i wouldn't say it's a bad thing but I, in big companies right you will be stuck in one uh, what, what do you say one belt you just need to own only one belt you can't go and like uh, do everything right uh i felt like uh, if i go to, that's why i actually have stopped uh, giving uh, interviews for the big company i thought uh, let me go to like startup or mid size so where i can learn more i can see a different because it's been uh, it's been two weeks since i joined my uh, a few weeks not two weeks uh, um i think i joined the job but it was actually good because i uh, i got to learn a lot of stuff which i never did i mean which i 
learned about it which i know how it works but i never had hands on uh so it's good actually uh, yeah. i feel like uh, that's the way you should go don't have fear and then go just learn that's it yeah i think that approach is really like without taking it hard if you just start taking interviews and then learn about your skill gap and then come back and then you know upskill yourself right right and then go back and attend more interviews yeah same thing happened with me for the coding also because uh, i'll tell you some examples as well 